I think you probably Leon probably got his uh, uh, no, YouTube. I got nothing on. Everybody <laughs> got something on. Uh, I have the television. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Man, my this old, old school meets the new technology. Right, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bernard Harris, and welcome to B Talk. Hi, this is Bernard Harris, and welcome to B Talk. Uh, today we have an old school reunion with three of the best American basketball players that have ever stepped on a finished court Larry Pounds, Leon Huff, and Irvin Latimer. What's up, guys? What's up, man? Everybody, we here. Everybody good? Yeah. Everybody we good. Good, good to see that that everybody is is healthy and 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 doing well. Well, I was born in the South, you know, Mississippi, but I moved, you know, with my mother. We moved to California when I was a little boy. So I've been basically I've been living in I born was raised in California, in Southern California. Okay. And uh, went to school there. In uh, high school, started playing ball, and and then I uh, uh, went to the University of Washington in uh, Pacific Northwest. You know, we have, of course, you know, we all the same age, so we always had a lot of uh, uh, guys that we play. You know, that you knew, I knew from yeah, from yeah. basketball, like Leonard Gray and yeah, and Dick yeah. D- D- Johnson, the guys, Gray. yeah. Yeah, all them guys, you know, so they was all going all over the country playing. And so we all knew all of those guys. So, you know, I knew, I remember that, you know, especially me and you, we played in the Philippines at the same time. Yeah, man, that that was a blast. That, right. That was, that was a blast, man. Right. So, you know, I've been, and, and like, I think I came here in 82, and I've been here since, ever since, 82. You know, called, called Phil in my home here. Okay. Leon? You up next, brother. I was born in L.A., little old. <laughs> <laughs> All the other and and uh, played, played my high school basketball there and left there. Was supposed to go to University of Houston, but at that time, freshmen couldn't play. That, they didn't play that many games, so I went to jun- uh, junior college, you know, and I um, went to San Jacinto Junior College, which is in Pasadena, Texas. Then I transferred back up north to Drake University, you know, we went to the NCAA tournament my first year there, and then we had a off season my senior year. And from there, I got drafted by the Denver Nuggets. You know, I tried out with the with the um, with the Seattle SuperSonics. Then I left there, went to Israel, played. Bernard, you were there with me for a while. Sure was for a while. For, 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 a, for, a, for a while. Yeah. <laughs> for, a quick, for a quick minute. <laughs> that, that was crazy. Yeah, before that, though, we had played on the national team together with uh, Larry Brown and Doug Moore was coaching. Yeah, and we you know we were in the Soviet Union, which it was called at that time. So yes, yes, it so, was. Okay. You and you and I have known each other since 1974. Actually, That's we right. we go way back, man. Way way back. <laughs> <They say. laughs> but uh, no, then after Israel, I came to Finland, and um, I was played here in Finland what for three years, and I went to Turkey for one year, and came back to Finland, and okay. I've been here ever since. I've been here ever since. Okay, Mr. Latimer. Yes. I'll ask your boy. I was born in South Carolina, but grew up in North Carolina. My dad had his own business, so we went back and forth, North Carolina, South Carolina. And then uh, I went to a small NAI school in South Carolina, Erskine. And there we went to the Nationals. We played against uh, uh, Kentucky State, and that was also in the same same uh, regional tournament was uh, Fritz Walker that played at Georgia, Georgia Southern. At the, at the tournament, uh, uh, you probably know him, Herb Rudolph. Yeah, I know her. Yeah. her. Right, right, right. <laughs> I remember her. Uh, so, so I was I was due to go to France, and then Clyde Alexander that was in Dumfrey, for some reason he didn't come back. So Herb just said that, you know, listen, we got this great team for you. And so I went to Tampere, and I was there for for one season, and then I went to France. 
I stayed in France for a year and then came back to Hong Kong. I think we won the championship that year when I came back. And then I went back to France. So eventually I came back and I've been here ever since. Well, think about this, guys. Could you ever have imagined, you know, like when you're growing up and you're hooping or you're outside playing or you're playing with the guys on the playground or whatever, could you ever have imagined that you would have ended up living in Finland? That no. is my wildest dream. <laughs> the father, the father, the father is from my imagination. <laughs> you know, hey, uh, I think it was my first year in Kutka, Craig Davis. Yeah. And uh, the first, my first week here, the only thing I can say was like, I was like, I, I said to Timo, you know, the team manager at that time, I said, Timo, you know, uh, when I came here, I had this round trip ticket. He was like, yeah, yeah, you know, we had it. I said, I want that other half now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get out of here. You know, hey, TV was like, uh, what, two hours a day? Uh, and there was zero to do during the day, you know? Yeah, yeah, nothing, like, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. All you can do is read. Nothing. I read a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's... Especially here, being, being in a little small city like Kutka, man, it was, it was nothing to do during the day. And then I was lucky, you know, that Craig came, man, the, the, like that weekend. It was like, well, you know, Beckett's got to have an American coming, you know, maybe, you know, and they brought Craig, I think, straight from his from the airport straight to my flat, <laughs> straight to my flat, man. <laughs> and we just hooked it up, man. We just, you know. And I, I tell people, I tell the young guys now, I said, you don't really understand how lucky you are when you have teammates, you know. That, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Because, man. see, we didn't have those type of teammates, man. No, yeah, no, we was, didn't. No, I, we didn't. Yeah, I was stuck like like Larry up in some... Up, up, <laughs> I was way up north on your team. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only black person in the city. <laughs> 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 you know, you talk about cold. I was like, damn. I remember the first time uh, the coach came and picked me up to go to practice. And... Uh, he had a Volkswagen, one of those Klein buses. And I we was we was going to practice. And I said, I said, I said, coach, turn the heat on. He said, the heat is on. I was like, <laughs> I'm like we're going through the city. I'm like, stop, stop, pull over here. And I run into this store, it's K Cali. I run in there and I tell him, I said, I want some, I want to buy some long underwear. So when I bought two pair and the lady was getting ready to put them in the bag, I said, no, 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 no. I said, give me one, them, give me one pair. And I wouldn't put them on the restaurant. <laughs> Man, it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember when, when, when I got here, uh, Irvin and, and Leon were, were already here. And you know, you know how you ask when you, you come into a new country and you, you ask the guys, I never forget this, man. I've told you guys this a thousand times. Yeah. So I asked, I asked one of the, 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 the Finnish players, I said, uh, you know, which, which Americans are, are, are playing here? So he named off a couple of guys. And then, then the guy said, uh, uh, Lexa Huff. <laughs> he said who he, I said who he said Lexa Huff I said no I don't know I don't know any Russians I said I know <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know a Leon Huff I said yeah I know, I've known Leon Huff he said yeah yeah that's who I'm talking about so Leon had already got over here and made his made his reputation right. I, met, I met Irvin Irvin uh, later through through playing and uh let's talk a little bit about our careers here guys uh i think that that we've all had excellent productive careers uh in this country uh talk a little bit about your career here larry i think everybody knew i played i was quite lucky i played i don't know if it was luck or whatever but i was with the same team here for my practically my entire career and uh, we had, uh, when I started out, we had a, a few older players like Bonin, Hondo, and Otto Bonin, and they were like winding down in their careers. And then we had, fortunately, we had a couple of very good young players coming up. 
uh, Martila and you know Gudfun and then uh, Tuomala and they were just coming up and so we had a lot of growing pains early but I think you know once we got kind of uh, uh, settled they got used to playing in the top level and we started to have a little success because we got we had uh, we got one of your old coaches from Honga, Kari Lima. He came. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He came here. He came to uh, coach us, and uh, when he came here, he kind of like, uh, I guess, uh, he kind of trusted me, and uh, and it was like a little bit for us. I think we was like, um, for us, it was like easier because you know once the coach trusted us, and we kept kept the same unit well, you know once we got you know limo came and he got us kind of more or less stable and that you know that's when we started to win a little bit and you know we we won a few championships so you know i think for us it was uh our, our strength was that we kept the same unit yeah for many years man it was it was hell coming to court to playing against you guys because yeah. you all you already knew when you get in there, man, it's, it was going to be tough. And right. the, the, the crowd, you know, the crowds were so much into the game. You know, they throwing stuff at the bus before the bus gets <laughs> when, <laughs> when the bus pulls up, they throwing stuff. You know, they're going crazy in the game. The referees are scared. Uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was tough winning in that uh, game. Hey, that was, it was tough. I think that was, uh, that's what everybody, you know, Everybody always said that it was very difficult playing because you know the crowd was right on you. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. the crowd was right on yeah. you. People were like all around the gym, like yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it, was it was like it was that was tough. Yeah. Man. That 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 yeah. was that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, sometimes at... <laughs> sometimes there would be so many people in the gym that we could. It was very. It was it was like difficult for us to get to the locker room to the gym because the, it would be so packed with people there. Yeah. You know, we got yeah, to find our way to the gym, man. It was, yeah, it yeah, it so was, packed. It was, it was, it was tough coming up in there. What about you, Leon? <laughs> oh, when, when I got to Yonsu, it was like, um, Yonsu was in the first division at that time. And they, I was the first American to ever play in Yonsu. And they had, the basketball wasn't so big at that time. And so when the uh, season started, we had a few people. Then as the season got got going, a little few more people coming. And then towards the end of about the three three fourths of the way through the season, gym was sold out. Many had people standing outside trying to get in, couldn't get in. The fire marshals had to keep people from coming in. Right. You know, so I mean it was it was a big change, you know, from when I first got there to the time, you know, the time that I was there because most of the time they were sold out. It was it was, you know, then after that I left and uh I was in Turkey, but then I came back to Finland, played one more year in Yonsu, and then I came to Helsinki and played in Topol because I knew I, I knew that Yonsu we couldn't win a championship there because we didn't have you know the high quality Finnish players like I did. So I went to Topol with the uh, which was a very good team, very good team. You know, really, I think about four players were on the national team, Finnish national team, and we won the championship that year. We won the Finnish. Cup and the champion, Finnish championship. Then the next year, uh, we lost to Bernard. Then. We lost to Turo <laughs> in, in the semifinal. And the funny thing, the funny thing is I kept telling the coach, I said, let me guard Bernard. He wouldn't let me guard. I said, man, I said, I said ain't, none, ain't none of them players going to stop Bernard. You, know? you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't have done anything with that fadeaway anyway. <laughs> 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 you know, I knew. 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 I I I think I think you see you see guys shooting like nowadays, all these deep three-point shots and all that stuff, stepping mm -hmm. across half court and all that stuff. Right, like, right. Larry was doing that stuff in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> because, because, I mean, you coming across half courts. I, I think, I think honest, honestly, I, I think that I was a good shooter. But you had more, I mean, I could shoot it from deep, but you had like range where you shooting at the scores table. 
<laughs> so if, if, if they're not if they're not picking if we're not picking you up at the scores table, you know you drop you dropping it you dropping it. <laughs> it was uh, the only you know the only way to stop you and Larry was can't let you get the ball. You know, and I know I knew it wasn't no finish player gonna stop you. <laughs> so so uh, they, y'all end up beating y'all end up beating us that year. You know, like I said, because uh, shit, you had you had one outstanding game. You dropped fifty on us. <laughs> like, well, the funny thing was, uh, you must have had about 37, 38 by then. And then he gonna put me on you, you know. Then he gonna put me on you. And so uh, the first shot you shot that faded away. I said, okay. Next time I foul the shit out of him. <laughs> 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 it is. So, he went and shot that fade away. I fouled him. We both hit the floor, and I turned around and looked. And he ain't hit nothing but bottom. I said, I'll be damn. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to say what I said. <laughs> I ain't going to say what I said. But, but you know, you know, like, like back then, back then when a guy got hot, you know, you knew you had to foul him. Right. You know, that's coach, that's coach, gonna yeah. tell you, you got to foul him, man. You got to make him pay. Nowadays, <laughs> they just let guys get hot. Guys just shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> nobody, nobody really fouling them. Uh, uh-huh. You know, so it, that that's you know, we had to pay when you got hot. You oh. knew you were going to get hit. <laughs> you, you knew. Yeah. What about you, Irvin? Well, it was it was an adventure coming into Thumbtree, and I was quick to get out, and then I went to France was in Dijon and then I came back came back to Honka and we won the championship that year and after that I went back to France again then I came to Panthers then I was in Hüvenkai I not like you guys you guys basically found a team and stable but I had basically I think I played for like six or seven teams while I was here okay. between here and here in yeah. France I don't know and then there was the one year Bernard and I, we played on the same team. Now that Man. was an that was an <laughs> that was an <laughs> It was it was we we it was it was an adventure, and we had we had some fun some fun along the way. Oh, and they told me that they couldn't they couldn't afford you, man. Who that? They said they said most of the teams couldn't afford you because you they said you used so much tape. <laughs> <laughs> Every every is taping his fingers, his ankles, his toes. Everything, man. Everything. I asked him. Larry, Larry, I asked him before before one game. I saw I saw him taping up taping up everything. I was like, damn, man, we getting ready to play a football game. (laughs) 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 What what we you know what we doing? How many championships? How many championships do we have among us? How many you have, Larry? Uh, I have four. Okay, Larry's got four. Leon? Three. Three? Mm-hmm. Irvin? One. You got one and I got one. So we, we, we got a lot of gold medals here. A lot of gold uh, medals. A, a lot of a lot of gold medals. Give me one guy you think was uh, your best teammate, or best player on your team. For me, it's easy. The best player uh, that I played with, well, for instance, the, the, during the time that we was winning championships, it's uh, Maritla. Peretti Maritla, he was, he was the best. He okay. was probably, mm-hmm. at that time, the most athletic player and the Finnish player in the country. Yeah, I mean, yeah, was, I'll, I'll, I'll agree was, with you, yeah. Yeah. And the older he got, the more he understood the game, the more he was able to, like, you know, understand the game, how the game is working, and, and you know, he was so easy to play with. Okay. And, and okay. dependable. For me, it was uh, Tapio Sten uh-huh. uh, in, in my days in, in Turku. Tapio, uh, Topsa came to us the second year I was there, and that was the year we won the championship. And he made it, made it a lot easier for me, man. Made it a lot yeah. easier for me because you couldn't double, if you double team me, He's right. gonna make you pay. Well, I think mm-hmm. wasn't he the last last finished player to lead the league in scoring? He was. He was. He was. Mm-hmm. And and uh, he 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 really really made it made my job a lot lot easier. Yeah. What about you, Leon? I have to say, uh, you know, Sarkolopter Moni, the uh-huh. first player I played with. You know, because he could score, he rebound, score, and 
he was, you know, he was a big man that could shoot the ball. You know, so he was probably the best player I played with. Because um, we played against him on the national team when we were here, Bernard. He was we? on that national team. Did we? Yeah, he was on that team. Okay, I, I, I don't, I don't remember anybody on that Cause, team. Yeah, actually, because he, he went to Brigham Young. He right? was at Brigham Young. Yeah. Yeah, he went to Brigham Young. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, he was. That was the best player I played because he could shoot the ball, he'd rebound, he played defense. You know, and you just, a lot of people, I remember when um, we won the second championship when I was playing and coaching, and we picked, we picked Moni up because Moni was playing with the second team. He was kind of out of shape. You know, he wasn't in the best of shape, but he, was, he wasn't really out of shape, though. But still, he came to play with us. And I, I heard something about Gordy said, you know, who is this guy? <laughs> he had never heard of Moni because Moni just came in the playoffs to play with us. For the year we won it, and he was like, "Who is this guy?" And Moni lit him up. <laughs> yeah, he could shoot it. He, could, he definitely, he, could he, shoot definitely, it. He, definitely yeah. he definitely could. He definitely could shoot it. He definitely yes, could. I have to say the same thing because Moni was on the team when we won. Man, that, I would have uh, thought that. you would have said me. <laughs> oh, I forgot you. I forgot you are finished. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, the question was a finished player. Yeah, go ahead. No, but 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 playing with Moni, it really made it easy because you know he could shoot it from distance, and it kind of gave me room to work in the inside. So that by far, I think he was one of the better shooters around at the time. How do you see the, the game nowadays here in Finland from from our, our, our time? I think the game has grown. I think one big, big uh, change that for the better is that, you know, 80%, 90% of the players that are playing in SM Charlie today, they have a possibility to practice twice per day. You know, when we were yeah. when we were playing, everybody was going to work, coming, you know, getting yeah. off work, coming to practice. Yeah. You yeah. know. So and now they can practice for you know, every single team, their team practices twice per day, you know. And that's that's like another six hours per week that you can practice. Yeah. You know, they physically they're getting better. You know, they they you know, like they now understand the value of lifting weights. And you know all, yeah. all the players, you know they they lift weights now. But back when we were playing, every Finnish team had at least two very good big Finnish players. That's true. At least two of them. Yeah, that, that is true. true. Except Johan, so. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have no help. I had to go. <laughs> hey, they're gonna, they gonna take your passport, Leon. You ain't gonna be able to go back to your institute. <laughs> what do you but think, at that Leon? Time, at that time, we didn't have no. I, I didn't really have no help. You only know, right. had two or three players that could play, and you know I had to push everybody to play. But I'm saying it was no. You know, I could see we we weren't just going to win no championship with the players we right. had. You know, so and uh, nowadays your is getting players to come up there now. But before that, you know, you couldn't get nobody to come up there. Like I said, it was so far away from everything. Right, yeah, yeah right. Them, yeah, and then road trips were something. I, I, I always wondered <laughs> about those. See, like right. every every week, you know, you, 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 you're going somewhere, you got you got a, you got a long trip. I always wondered about right. those. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, when I played with Panthers, we had Zitten, Lingalotti, uh, what's the kid you always tease? Sulo? Sulo. Yeah, Sulo. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, we had, at that time, I think they had better big guys playing then. But they they had, because you have to take in consideration, I think the, the, the bigger, better players are out of the country. Right. They're basically, they're basically yeah. somewhere. They're not here. I think, I think, the, the the players are, are are better nowadays, more athletic, like you guys said, yeah. and the system the system is better. Uh, right. But I think that we had more fan enthusiasm. Exactly. I don't yeah. think they had the fan enthusiasm that 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 we had. 
You know, uh, yeah. like like we, we talk about going to court because people throwing eggs at right. the bus. Right. You know, right. you're going into the gym. The the the, the temperature is high. The, the you know the tension is high. I don't think they 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 have that uh, nowadays. Basically, most of the teams, you know, Kutka and and and, and everybody, else, they always had a player from the other team that they hated. Yeah. True. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it was always yeah. that one guy that when you go, like you go to Uzi Kalbunke, you go someplace, there was always that one player or two players that they hated and they were screaming at you. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. You know, a- a- exactly, you know. man. It, it was, it was, that was, that was, I think, the the difference in then and, yeah. and, and now. Yeah, uh, yeah. And moving on, moving on from, from our careers to our Post career, uh, all three of you guys have had children that that grew up here in Finland and played basketball. Uh, I coach Sean Huff, and I also coach Cedric Latimer. Haven't had a chance to coach Mike or your two daughters, like. But uh, you guys, I think, I think, well, all four of us have changed the landscape of basketball just from the aspect of you guys having kids playing and also coaching, being a mentor. I think we've actually changed the landscape in, in, in Finnish basketball. Uh, Larry, you had three kids that, that, that have all played at the top level here in Finland. Your two daughters went to school in the US. What do you think are the advantages of kids growing up here and going to play at the universities in the States? I think it's probably one of the best systems in the world, especially for a young uh, athlete. You have an opportunity to get an education and you have an opportunity to be coached by some of the best coaches in the world. And you have the best facilities to train and everything. So I think that's one of the best opportunities for a young player to have. Uh, of course, there's a, I'm not saying that, you know, opportunities here are not that great. But for me, if you have an opportunity to educate yourself and then to, you know, and, and then play at the same time, I don't think, you know, because here, you know, like kids that go to school here, it's a struggle because of uh, finances. Education is free, but you don't get a lot of financial support from, from the government when you're in school here. You get a little money, but it's yeah. not nearly enough, you know? And I, I think for, for me, that system, for young for a young player, for young players, like, you know, from 18 to 22, yeah. I think it's the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Leon, what do you think? I'm, I'm, I agree with Larry. You know, like that. Um, you know, it's, it's the best thing. So for some, some, some of the players, it's good that they go there. I don't think it's good for all players because no, some, of course, yeah, you know, some of them don't like going to school. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but like Larry said, right. they don't get too too much financial help. You know, here, whereas actually we didn't get to, we 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 had our scholarship paid for everything, room and board, food, and everything. But we didn't get no pocket money, knock on wood. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not in this that you can t- tell anybody about. Exactly. No, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 like. Right. But I'm saying, you know, it, you know, there was, you know, it's, I think it was good, you know, like when Sean, Sean's dream was to go play college basketball, and he told me that, and he said, and and he asked, he asked. Um, he had told me, he said, that I can go, you know, he said, I know I can probably go play professional here in Europe. He said, but I want to, you know, I want to go play college basketball and see what it's like. Because I started basketball at a later age of 12, I really needed that time in college to really mature to the player that I will become. And he, and that's, you know, and I had to do a lot of work to stop, stop him from being a professional so that he could do that, you know, and that's what he ended up doing. And it helped him out a lot. He really, you know, he, he said the, Hard part about the first year was just being away from home. So yeah. after, after he got through the first year, yeah, he said after he got through the first year, you know, it was easy. It was you know, it wasn't no hard because he had friends there now, and 
you know, and plus he was a dual citizen. He had American citizenship, so. Yeah. I think the biggest shock is just being away from home, you know. It's not, you know, it feels like it was recent, but it kind of wasn't, you know. We didn't have smartphones yet, and it kind of wasn't the same thing. So you were really further away from home than you are now if you go across the world. So it was, I think that was probably the biggest shock is being away from home, but. But he enjoyed it, you know, like he said, you know, he, he, he could always come back to Europe and play. He wasn't worried about that. He just right. wanted to play college basketball, yeah. which he enjoyed, you know, and he did well in school. He graduated, got his degree, and like I said, it's going to help him in the future. Larry had two, his daughters went there, and Erwin had a son go there. And they're all, you know, I'm proud of all of them because they're doing well. They're all doing well, you know, and they don't really have to depend on basketball because they all got that education. You know, which I thought was which I thought was really great for you know all of all Irwin's son and Larry's two daughters you know and, and well, you know Irwin's daughter Irwin's daughter was uh, uh, a big time player yeah, yeah. I was, I was yeah. about to say yeah. Leon yeah. don't yeah. get my ass in trouble <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, I'm proud of them, man. I'm proud of all our kids, you know, that have gone there and done well, come back, you know, or come back or still there doing well, you know, and it's, you know, it's just shows that, you know, that the, what we have, you know, done with our kids, you know, we, we have put that, we have installed that education thing in their head, you know, which was installed in me, you know, you, you need that education. Even though my daughter didn't play basketball and, and she wasn't into sports that, I'm I'm happy with 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 her and and how she turned out and she's doing positive stuff. Just graduated with a business degree and and so I'm really proud of that. And I, I think that I, our kids, all of our kids, are doing something positive for Finnish society or wherever like the, wherever they are in the world. They are doing something right, positive. Exactly. Yeah. My youngest son, Michael, he's doing well. You know, he he didn't he didn't care about sports either. But he did well in school. You know, he got himself educated. He's doing well now. Good job, doing very well. So you know, he wasn't. You know, he didn't go the route Sean did. Yeah. The other route, like Bernard's daughter. Yeah. You know, so right. and uh, I'm proud of him. Just proud of him, as I am. You know, of, you know, all the other. I'm proud of all our yeah. kids man, because, like I said, like Bernard says, they have showed the way. You know, and you know, they're doing good things here in Finland. You know, and and it's, it's you know, and we can't be. You know. We, we have nothing but pride for our kids. Even our kids play basketball, but we didn't say that, well, we didn't like push them into basketball. No, no, no we didn't, no. no. You see, that was a choice, you know, mm -hmm. so we were supporting them in whatever they wanted to do. It's not, they just chose basketball because, you know, they, exactly. they love the game. And, and uh, I think that was a, a big thing too. It was like, we, we supported them. Not yeah, just but, because they play basketball. Exactly. But we, yes, but we all. Yes. But you know what? We all stress that education thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, like, I told, like I told Sean, I said, basketball comes second, school comes first. I had to perform at a certain level in school so I could play basketball. Basketball was like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a, a given to me. So. <laughs> well, that's no, what no. that's what Sean said in, in our in our podcast. He said if he didn't get the grades, you know, he he, he couldn't play. He couldn't no, play. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I put it. I put it like we had in college and high school. You had to be keep grade point, to be eligible to play. And I put it on him. I said, you know, that's yeah. the way it is. You know, if you, you want to play that sport, then you got to hit them books. But like we had, yeah. To do. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, it, it, that's the way it is. You know, yeah. like, like I have, I have one one coach tell me, uh, it was it was it was when I was in high school. We had I had a black coach. He told me he says. You're going to college to get an education. He said, basketball is just going to pay for it. He said, so if you go there, basketball will pay for your education. You're going there. He said, and it ain't nothing worse than a dumb ass athlete. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he, told, he, told, he told you the truth. He told you the truth. What yeah, do you got, Irvin? Yeah. <laughs> what do you got for us, Irvin? I think our kids been born here. Uh, they get in the best of both worlds. They get in a good basic education here. And then my kids were fortunate enough, they went uh, high school in the state, private school in, in California. And uh, like you said, the opportunities and possibilities there are so much different than here. Uh, Erica, Daniel, and, and Cedric was 30,000 a year to go to high school. 
we didn't have to pay a penny for that. That 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 was because they were so good academically, and of course, uh, uh, athletic wise, they were they were good. So it's a trem- I think the greatest thing is that being Americans and letting your kids get the basic education here and then they go to the states and get exposed to that the only thing that I, I in my mind just my thoughts I would have thought uh, I'm quite sure I think Larry and I have spoken about this a few times I'm just thinking if my kids had grown up in the states for example Cedric I think he would have been probably a totally different player because things were so easy here and when he got there it was so easy and he just didn't have that I don't know that just says something like him that if he had grown up in the states in terms of being competitive. But well, uh, you know, other, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it, it's just that it's just that uh I, you you take a kid like like my son Cedric, uh the best small forward in Southern California and he gets back uh he gets back to Europe and I don't know what happened. So but that I'm happy with that he's gotten his masters he's a chef i mean he can do whatever the hell he wants to do so but like all of you ha- will agree i think in terms of education our kids have have actually done very well yes so, uh, yes yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. and and you i mean you never know i i, I think kids going you know you you can say that maybe he would have been different different player in the states maybe not you, you you never know i think you, know, uh, you don't know you, you never know. know because because of yeah. the competition <laughs> in america you you never know the only thing they lacked was that meanness that, that, that was as small exactly as well. that that's what i'm talking about that that, <laughs> you know, part, that we go we go like i used yeah. to go to the park used to get my ass excuse my english used to get my ass kicked you know and it just and they tell you you know you try to call a foul and you want the youngest players out there they gonna tell you shut the hell up and play. You know what can you do? Right. You can't whoop nobody out there, so it just makes you mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, you uh, yeah. know, yeah. I, I, I wanted to, you know, you know, piggyback on that same point. I, you know, I, I, I don't think it was mean. I think it was uh, that because we all had it that playground experience. Yes, and yes. you couldn't mm-hmm. play when you went to the gym. You couldn't play if you didn't win. Yeah, you that's right. You're going you you to sit, sit over there for an hour. You sit, you, yeah. sit, you sit there waiting for a game, and the guy just lost, came off. He's like, well, I got him. You, and you're like, hey, I'm sitting on, sitting on the bench here for <laughs> two hours. Uh, yep. uh, look. Yeah. So I think that playground mentality that we all had, it's like when yeah. we go out there, it's that's like, true. look, hey. That's true, like I got to put it up. <laughs> I'm sitting over here. All day. And, <laughs> right. yeah. play, man. and and after after this, uh we all we all went into some form of coaching. Irvin, I'm gonna start with you on this. Uh you haven't done as much coaching as the rest of us, but you started you were one of the guys that started that zero nine Helsinki human rights project. Uh, for refugees and immigrant kids in Helsinki. And I think that was an excellent program. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, that kind of, at the time I was teaching at uh, Kulusari, I was a physical education teacher there. And uh, we had, uh, after school, we had, you know, we had kind of a basketball club. And then I ran into Pavel and he just said that, okay, uh, we have a gym in Kalio, and if you're interested, uh, that it should be including all, you know, all kids, not just particularly Finnish kids, that sort of thing. So when we started out, we started out from Kulasari, we had like 12 kids. And I think when we finished, we ended up with about 800 kids. And the great part about it, you, Bernard, uh, I don't know if Leon ever came down, but we always Leon was invited. there. Leon, Leon yeah. came down a couple of times. Yeah. yeah, we always invited outside people so they could get some idea as to what was out there besides of just you know just you know them being refugees, uh, uh, low income things, that sort of thing. I think we made a trip. We made trips like to Sweden, which I'll never forget. We won't talk was, about that it. That was another interesting trip. <laughs> 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 
But, but I, yeah. I, I, I think that that more I think that more than just having a basketball team and working with the kids in basketball, you guys made sure that they did well in school, that they did their homework. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a whole lot. The idea was, okay, you can have the basketball, the gym, it didn't cost anything, but the the cost was that you had to be uh, successful in, in the classroom. And it, it, it worked out well. We ended up with three or four guys that went to the Polytechnical School in Altenemi, uh engineers that went to England. Didi, he went to Australia to study. I mean, there was quite a few kids that came out of that program that really, really went above and above, uh, above any expectation. So it, it, it was a really enjoyable, I, I, I found it a really enjoyable time because we also had Jerry uh, Messelin that was also helping out. So it, that, that was a great time. But that was, that, was a, that, was a great, that was a great program. I guess it's still going on, but it's not like it used to be no, when, when, no. when you guys were, were, were there. Uh, Leon, you've done a lot of, uh, a lot of coaching since you retired you know from playing uh talk a little bit about your coaching career well i start out with uh working with juniors well no actually i coached football one year as a men's team and ended up playing at the end of the season in which we won the championship and but then i after i stopped playing i started working with young players you know and i've had two teams to, that we have got the bronze middle in finland you know and um i've had a couple of players that have gone on and played on the national team, you know, and had good careers. I stressed to them mostly about school, you know, that, you know, the school was more important, you know, and it just, like I said, I had, I had a great time working with the kids. You know, we had fun and laughing and joking and, you know, and um, it was, to me, it was good, you know, but then later, you know, I realized that, okay, now I got to stop getting too old for this. <laughs> Didn't you win uh, a championship as a head coach for Topo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was coaching. I ended up playing that year. Okay. Also. So you were playing and coaching. Yeah. So you were coaching. coaching and you decided like, man, I need to get a good player in here. So you started playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't nothing like that. It was like, it was like, it was like what happened was the, the, I, I had a I had a great American player, but he just was doing some dumb stuff, you know. Okay. And we had practice. We had, we, we had been up in Tampere, and we just we I come in at halftime. He sat there smoking a cigarette. I'm like, man, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm halftime now. I don't care after the game yeah. or before the game, but not in no halftime. So, and uh, we ended up losing the game. And I told everybody, I said, okay, I said, I want everybody to practice. Uh, it was Tuesday, we had practice on Tuesday. I said, Monday was off. I said, okay, I want everybody to practice on Tuesday. I said, I don't care if you're half sick. I said, you can, you can set your butt over there in the stands and watch. So he don't show up. You know, he didn't show up. So I, oh, I said, if you don't show up, I'm going to suspend you. So he didn't show up. And so I was going to suspend him, but honestly, those guys talked me out of it. And I said, okay. And the next day, he, he called in and said he had the flu. Come to find out, he down in the club club. And I said, okay, he's suspended. And they said, well, you know, he had that club flu. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, he so I suspended him, you know, and I said, okay, I'll play, I'll play this weekend, you know. And so what happened was the management called me in and said, you know, did you suspend him? I said, yeah. They said, well, we send him home. I said, you can't send him home. I said, if we make the playoffs, you know, I'm going to need him in the playoffs. They said, well, who's going to play this weekend? I said, I'll, I'll play this weekend. They said, well, then you can play in the playoffs. I said, no. I said, no. I said, no. I said, he going to play. I said, no, you, you play. If you don't play, they said, well, we'll just play without an American player. They were not bringing another player in there. I said, so the deal was they had to pay me for playing and coaching. And, and it was so funny because we ended up winning the playoffs. I got three paydays. So so as a, as a player, did you ever have any problems with the coach? No, I'm talking about I'm talking about when you were coaching and playing. 
No, I didn't. Coach Newton. Hey, what are you doing? I won a 20 and under championship too one year with the Pump Player. I won a 20 and under championship with the team I had. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. 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 What about so, you, Larry, your coaching? Well, you know, well, I coached uh, the men's KTP here for a couple of years. And uh, we did, uh, we were, we were, uh, we did all right. Uh, we was in the top four, and uh, and then I started coaching. Well, I coached the women here, Becca. We did all right. We got the bronze. A couple of years, we got the bronze medal, and then I started coaching the uh, juniors. And uh, the one thing, that, one thing I liked about coaching juniors, we, you know, we had some success as far as winning medals and stuff like that. Not never the gold, but you know. Always like bronze or silver, but the one thing I I, I, I liked about coaching the juniors is that you have a, an impact on the way they think about, for instance, foreigners. You know, because like when you when you coach them and they see you and you interact with them day in day out and you and you and you, and you have an impact on them, and it's like after uh, after they leave. Two, three years later, you know, they see you. They're so happy to see you. Yeah, You're so happy to yeah. see them, mm -hmm. you know. And to me, that's like, that's one of the biggest rewards that I got from, yeah, from uh, coaching the juniors. Mm -hmm. Because they I always, agree. you know, yeah. they always respect, you know, respect how you handle them and how you, you know, interacted with them. And especially like after, you, after they go away from school and you see how successful they become. And it, you know, it just it kind of warms you up. Like, look, okay, I had some kind of part in what he's doing. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> some positive effect on right, on on, right. on on their life. Right, and and you right. know that, that that means a lot both ways for you and for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and it's that those type of things that that are special. Myself, I, I've I've done a lot of lot of coaching here, uh, as you guys know, uh, with the with the top level chorus league. I started actually in the chorus league of coaching. Well, and, well one, and, of your, and, one of your players is still playing now. Uh, who, uh, who are we talking about? Uh, Tuka. Yeah, Tuka. Tuka, Tuka is still <laughs> Tuka is still playing. Yes, he's he is. still playing. Yes, he you coach is, Sean man. too. You coach Sean I coach, too. I coach Sean. I coach Sean. I've coached uh, Cedric. Uh, Tuka is still playing, man. What and what a great player Tuka was when yeah. he, well, he's still a good player. What what a good player he was when he played for me when I was coaching in Salem for Vilpas. I mean, he was a guy, a tall kid who could do basically everything. And when I, te I tell people nowadays, I say, man, you should have seen Tuka when he was young, how he used to handle the ball, shoot the threes, playing point right. guard. Uh, just a, a really, really good player, man. Great player. And and his dad, his dad was a was a good guy as well. But I think for me, as far as coaching goes, one of the things that I'm most proudest of in coaching, or most proud of in coaching, is the fact that I was chosen to coach the Finnish national team, to be a head coach of a Finnish national team for boys 15 and under. That was right. in 2001. And yeah, like, I, I think you, you were working with- I remember with, that. Yeah, yeah, I was working with, I was assistant coach though, but you was, yeah, you were the head coach. Yeah, I, I was the head, head coach. Yeah. For, and, and Cedric Latimer actually played played uh, for me. And also on that team, who's still playing now, is Miko Koivisto. Okay. He was he was on, on that team with, with, with Cedric. And uh, so was Gerald, Gerald, Lee Gerald Lee Jr. was on that team. Right. But he's he's not playing anymore. But uh, that was one of the things that, that I've been most most proud of in my in my in my coaching career. I've I've had a lot of camps uh, I've, I've, you know, coached a lot of juniors, worked with Leon one year coaching juniors for Helsinki Nomica. Uh, so together, all of us guys, we have affected thousands of young Finnish kids' lives. And not only Finnish kids, but, but, uh, but refugees, immigrant kids, just say kids in Finland. We've, affected, Finland. we've yeah. affected thousands of lives. And I, I think that's something that we we all can can be proud of 
and hold hold our heads high on 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 that deal. And yeah. I, you know, I, I I think it was so natural for us coming from the states to give back because because that's what we saw growing up. We saw the the older players, the good players, the top players having camps, giving back, trying to help you get better as a player. And I think for us, it was just natural to yeah. to, to do that. And if you, I'm thinking back, you're talking about one of my players still playing. Uh, I remember when Temu Raniko, I played with his dad in, in Turku uh, on that same team. Uh, Temu Raniko was a little kid, man, at my camp. Just a little kid. <laughs> he had like big ears and stuff at, at, <laughs> at, at my camp. And, and and when he got older and he was playing in the Euro League and all that stuff, and I ran across him one day and I said, Oh man, what's going on? He was like, Nothing, Ben Cool, I'm good. I said, Oh, you're making a lot making a lot of money now. And I said, Hey, you 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 remember you remember my camp, right? Banku's basket. And he started laughing. I said, Yeah, you you can go ahead and give some of that money back now. And, and uh, he, he 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 just he just started laughing, but Guys, I, I think that that we've all done as far as as the basketball and and in in life, we all try to to give back. And I, I think that whenever we can, we'll continue to give back. But on that it's note, true. on that note, talking about giving, let me mention this: Irvin Latimer was the first guy to bring corn dogs to finish. Yes, sir. I, I had yep. to mention I had to mention that because I'm thinking to myself I'm going to ask you guys what's one of the things you miss most about not being home? Family. That's all. Okay. Family. Yeah. I, I, family. family. I family. Yeah. yeah. Family. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's it. Family. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Say, I'll yeah. say some family <laughs> and and some friends, but other than family no. and friends, no. what else do you miss? Some foods, probably. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What foods you know, do you miss? What foods do you miss? Well, I don't miss them now because they, you know, most most of the foods are here now. Only thing they don't have here is fried chicken. Yeah, but you, you can know. cook fried chicken yourself. Man, exactly. don't don't exactly. and and don't tell but, 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 and don't tell Cedric Latimer they don't have fried chicken in Finland. That's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Whatever. Said, you can cook it yourself, but you know, but sometimes you're lazy. You're like, man, it takes time to make some fried chicken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that. But that's when it tastes the best. It tastes that's the best true. when you just. Eh. But see, the, see the thing. For example, uh, Larry will tell you, Cedric thinks he can cook. Cedric can <laughs> cook. No, Cedric, no, no, Cedric, no, can. No. Cedric no. can cook. Cedric don't think he can cook. I know he can. Cook. Yeah, Cedric can cook. <laughs> but I'm quite sure you know I can cook. Yeah, 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 you 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 can cook. Right. Too. I know that. I know yeah. that. Yeah, you keep. No. Uh, at least you keep Irvin. trying to convince me of that. Irvin, what's the name? What's the name that you had over here, Doris? She didn't want to help your brother learn how to cook. I absolutely, absolutely. She was with me when I was in Doris. She was with me in Estonia, like you know, when I was in yeah. Estonia for seven with years. With the text uh, mess joint. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Doris could cook, right. boy. What, what, Irvin, what, what uh, made you think about bringing corn dogs to, to Finland? Have you ever eaten a Finnish hot dog? That's back what, that's, I was going to say, that's one of the things I miss most here, man. Going to get a good hot dog. A good man. hot dog. Oh, yes. so you like me, man. You like me. That's one of the first things I get when I'm at uh, when I go home, man, a good hot dog. A good hot dog, man. I, I, I miss it. I miss it. Either a good hot dog or a good chili dog. Now, yeah, either yeah, the, yeah. good dog. Right, right, yeah. And I figured that if anybody eats, uh, you know, it's like a, a sponge with a little dried up gnocchi in it. And I figured <laughs> if they eat that, then shit. <laughs> and sure enough, when I started the corn dogs, that... We ended up almost everywhere with corn dogs. It was just uh, out of necessity for myself. And the corn dog is still is still going. Larry, Larry. Yeah. I owe you a package, but I never got an address. 
I, I sent you my address, man. I'll send no. it to you again. Send me again because I'm just getting ready to but, make a new batch. Like you didn't okay, go, because, you didn't go for that, did you? No, because see, I know <laughs> you didn't go know, for that. Hey, when you make a batch, let me know. <laughs> I know the trouble that he had opening up this Zoom, so I figured he probably has some trouble. <laughs> 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 Man, we had to, we had to run through the Zoom for like two, three days. No, man, you see, see, I, I, I'm good with some things, but I, I, I'm honest, man. I was work. I had the Zoom open on my phone. It was open already. We had, okay. we, had to, we had to we had to have the walk through like they do. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we got we got. We got every we got everybody we got everybody here. Okay, I want to ask everybody here one question. All right, uh, it's, it's about basketball. Okay, that uh, who during the, during our time who that you played, who you consider the best player during your years here? Not your, not necessarily your teammate, but another player that was playing on any team in Finland. In Finland? Who did you say? Yeah, who was okay, you say? I'll give Not, you... Finnish player, Finnish player. I'll give you what I think was the toughest guy to play against. Okay. Uh, and I think for me, that was uh, Ante Zitting. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was probably... He, I, I, th I think most of you guys... <laughs> I agree with you on that. Uh, yeah, I, and I, 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 I think I that... I think no, most I, I, I played with him. It was good. I right. played with him. Yeah, but to to yeah. play to play we against him, against him. I think he was probably one of the toughest to to play against because there was nothing you really could do to upset him. No, <laughs> you know, you you, you, you you couldn't you couldn't like you give him an elbow or nothing. Right. You know, he, he just, just he just keep strong. playing. He just keep he just playing. Laugh it off. He just yeah. laugh it off. So he come back stronger. <laughs> he was he was one of the I would say he was he was one of the uh, of the toughest guys I played against. I'd say I, I have to agree with you there. He was. You know. I would say I would say that the most dangerous player and he played with Bernard and he played like Bernard was Tapio Stan. Now that was a dangerous person. I mean you It was really dangerous if you got close to him. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to get close to him. <laughs> you didn't have to get close to him. He go looking for you. <laughs> you know, for me, for me, he wasn't he wasn't a player that I played against. But he was a player that I played against. He didn't play my position. But he was like what Erwin said, the most dangerous player, I think, for, for us was this Scotty Becker Klinger. Oh yeah. This guy. Oh uh, yeah, when yeah, he got, yeah. When he yeah. got hot. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, he was just, he would just, you know, he would just pull up from anywhere. Yeah. When he got hot, it was like, it was over. And he had no, he had no conscience. He had no conscience, man. When I first went to Topo, he was a junior. That's his first year playing with the men. He was 17 years old. We was out there playing. And he was playing kind of scared, you know, because of all of us older players. And I just sat down and told him one day, you know, he, he was respecting us. And I just told him one day, I said, you can respect us off the floor, but on the floor, you don't respect nobody. You just play, you know? And I try to put that in his head because I could see he could play. He could play. Yeah, he could play. And you you told him to try to dunk on me. Larry, <laughs> 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 that is that didn't turn that didn't turn out too well. That didn't turn out too well. And you know what, what was what's what's the player there? Uh honestly and uh What's his name, Bernard? Um, uh, Petri, Petri, Volta uh, line. Volta, yeah, they, they were going at it, man. They were going at it. And so I seen, I'm sitting there, and I see Ansi, he bowled Petri in the side. If Petri, <laughs> then, he, then he took off. You know, he was moving away from him before he could get bowled back. And Petri with the ball, Ansi, and Ansi, by Ansi moving, he hit Bernard. <laughs> Bernard, 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 B
Auntie, Man, I know somebody, 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 somebody hit me. Hey, Bernard was getting ready to snatch him out of the I know some. I know somebody hit me, man. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Look here, Auntie got more sense than that to hit you. I don't know. I don't know who it was, but all I know is I felt an elbow in my in my rear. <laughs> but Auntie, now you know Auntie got more better sense than to hit you. Well, he might talk a little bit. You know, in the heat of the game, man. In 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 the heat of the game. But I I, I think that. In, uh, it was a, it was in the heat in the heat of the game. But I, I think I think that uh, you take it up for it. I said no, he ain't get you, man. I think I think that uh, I think that that. You know those 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 heat of the moment things. Yeah, it happens. You see it happen oh, yeah. back back then a little more mm -hmm. than than you see now nowadays. Right. But, but you, don't, you, the game you don't you don't really see that. Back then. Yeah, the game was, the game, game was more, yeah the game was, it was more physical. Yeah. Most, yeah. Yeah. most of the time we were by ourselves. What no other Americans? Yeah, uh, yeah. we were yeah. the only American, and we had we was carrying a load. People mm -hmm. don't understand that we were carrying a load. We led the team in rebounding. We led the team in scoring. You know. And, and, and then you have to guard the best player on the other team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, I mean, we were carrying a load, and people didn't understand it. Like, I, I look at these players nowadays, and I said, man, half of them, over half of them wouldn't even last back then. We was playing. Yes, you know? now, it's, it's a whole different, it's a different, it's, it's a different yeah, ball yeah. game. Now. It's a different ball yeah. game, you know. But you think and, of one of them, if they was, the only reason, like I said, one of them, if they had just had one player, they wouldn't have three or four players. They only have one player. They're going to have to have some good finished players. That's the he, thing. Here's the, here's the, here's the final question for you. Uh, let's compare now. One, when we were playing, it was only one, one foreign player, one American. Now, nowadays you have, I think you can have at least four. So mm -hmm. what do you think? It was more fun to play back then. When you knew you were going to get the ball, you were going to get a lot of shots, or to play now with three other guys and you're not going to get so many shots. I think back, well, I loved it back. Then. I loved it back then because I loved it too. Because we had I loved it back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Couldn't get, it, it, it couldn't get any better. It couldn't yeah, get any good better. Good finish players also playing with us. But you know, also it made you a, it made you a better player because you knew you had to play. All the time. You, if you got three fouls, you have to play with three fouls. Yeah, you got four yeah. fouls. Mm -hmm. You have to play yeah. with four fouls. So you, it made well, you a better player. And you're going to play at least between 35, 40 minutes a game. Oh, yeah. Uh, or, come, or, or at least 40, 39 minutes a game. You had to be in shape, you know? Exactly. You know, I hate it, man, when, when the coach would take me out, out of a game. Oh, me too. You know, I'm like, too. <laughs> you know, man, don't, don't, don't take me, don't take me out of game, you know, uh, for what, whatever reason, unless I'm just like really hurt, you know, right, uh, right. Uh, uh, don't, don't, man, let me, let me play. I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm not going to get tired. I think we all were like, right. that. I think we all right. were like that. And when we first got here, I guess they were playing four times 12 minutes. Right. Yeah, they were. That's yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. They went to that for a couple yeah. of years. Yes, yes. That's forty-eight minutes. Yes, and we were going. We were going. <laughs> we were going the whole game. The whole game. The whole, the whole game. Too. Thanks uh, for you guys coming to talk to us, man. This this has been a, a, a real pleasure, and I'm sure people watching this are going to really enjoy this. You guys stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and we will talk soon.